Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Kamil Adamczyk. I'm the CEO of uh, Intel Clinic. We are doing a smart sleep mask. Um, last year, we uh, we finished the, the biggest Polish Kickstarter campaign. Uh, we raised almost half a million dollar uh, with our sleep mask, uh, wearable mask. So today, I'm going to tell you a little bit about the, uh, the wearable market, why, why it's getting more and more interested. And uh, I would also like to tell you a little bit more about the development of our product. Um, I would like to tell you more about our device, uh, what it is and uh, what it isn't. And uh, about our delay, we are running over a year uh, delay from our initial schedule. So I would like to tell you a little bit more um, why this delay uh, occurred. So let's start about the wearable. Um, so I have little fancy graph which illustrated how the, uh, the market rapidly grow. Um, but I think it's um, just recently uh, a, couple of, a couple of news occurred. So uh, I think it, is, it will be a very interesting topic and it will be a very interesting piece of market. Um, I don't know if, if you heard, but there is a, um, there is a sleep tracking device called, called Sense. Uh, last year, they closed almost $2 million uh, Kickstarter campaign. And just recently, last week, um, they, they closed almost $40 million uh, A round, a devaluation between uh, 250 uh, $300 million. Um, so it shows that uh, people are getting closer look at the uh, wearable stage. Uh, and. Uh, I would like to tell you more why it's so late. So probably two years ago, a lot of experts said that it should be a wearable war, wearable year, and then the wearable should be a key element of um, um, the biggest deal two years ago. And I would like to tell you a little bit more uh, why it didn't happen. The second deal uh, is a Fitbit. Uh, they just got uh, they just went public um, last week. Uh, they raised a really huge amount of money, uh, much more than they expected. Um, so this is just uh, two deals from the recent amount from the recent month. Uh, so it really shows that um, this space is growing really rapidly. Um, I would like to stop here uh, a little bit and um, wonder if you about the wearable, what's the future of the wearables, and uh, where is the place of wearables in comparison to professional medical devices, and what's the, what's the main purpose of all the, all the wearable devices? Basically, a lot of wearable devices, most of them, tracking our, uh, our organism, our body, our health, and provide, uh, provide us with a lot of information. The accuracy is uh, another topic. Um, however, one of the most important thing is increasing awareness among people. So if we are more aware about our health, about our body, probably we will choose the more healthy um, way of acting, way of living. So this is all about the prevention. Um, with devices such as Fitbit, um, we could prevent uh, from risky behaviors and we could act more healthy. This is the main reason of uh, wearable devices. I see the wearable devices as a dashboard uh, in the car. And um, wearable tracking our, um, our data from our body. And the smart smartphone displays this data um, so that we could read it and uh, start acting, start uh, changing our uh, behavior. Unfortunately, we don't have a dashboard in our organism. Um, we don't have built-in chips, uh, so the data from our body cannot be tracked um, directly from our organism uh, as the car does. So unfortunately, um, nowadays, this mobile dashboard looks like this. 
uh, we are attached to different uh, wires around our, uh, around our body. It's uh, uncomfortable. Um, it feels awful uh, very often. However, it's, um, it's accurate and it could provide uh, reliable data. Um, that's why they put us into the wired um, when we are going to the hospital. So the problem with wearables, the main problem with wearables is that a lot of people can't see any benefit uh, by using these devices. So we are buying different devices, we are tracking different data, but without the, speci like the, the professional knowledge, we cannot use this data. So um, we just throwing this device away and um, stop using it. So right now, the biggest, um, the biggest challenge in front of us is to provide the user with the device which, which could automatically change their behaviors. We don't need to, we don't want to hear another data, another uh, information source. Um, we want to hurt tailored information um, sent directly to us, not to anybody else. So we have the new relationship between these devices and our organism. So we are blended like digital world. Uh, we are blending technology with our uh, physical presence. So from one side, we have the medical device, <coughs> which tracking our data and provide us uh, with different statistics. And on the other hand, we have wearables, which may be not tracking this data so accurately, but they are much more pleasant for us. We could accept the existence of this device day by day in opposite to medical device. But there is like an obvious question about the design and the accuracy. So what is more important? The device to be pleasant, to be wearing off, or the accuracy of this device? So I think that um, the future of medical devices and the wearables will be the same so the wearables blend with medical devices because the goal of medical device is to be not invasive as possible and the goal of wearable is to be as accurate as possible. So if we combine those two goals, we will get one device, medical device, which will be very present for the people who wear it and will be the, at the same time very accurate. So if you take a look at the step counting from the different devices uh, across the market, we could see very uh, huge, change, huge changes um, if you are tracking only one person throughout one day. So this device uh, we've been using um, at the same time, but the same person. Um, so we could see that right now on the market, there is different amount of accuracy. This is hard to say which one of these devices is the most accurate. We just, keep, we just see that the, the amounts are different. This, we have the same situation if we take a look um, at the sleep measurement. Um, if we compare different sleep trackers across the web and across the market, you will see significant changes uh, in the outcome of uh, of the measurement of these devices. So it is obvious that it is really, it is really, hard, to, um, it's really hard to say which one is the best. In case of sleep, measure sleep measurement, we have the golden star, which is the polysomnography at the top of this graph. Um, however, if we go deeper into the sleep analytics, um, we will see this kind of graph. So this is the so-called um, seeing scourge. So the physician gets this kind of graph and they need to decide which stage of sleep occurs in which moment. The problem is that if we compare two manual to human analy analysis, we will get um, two different outcomes. 
and the difference between those out outcomes are up to 60%. So it's more than half of the measurement, so it's almost the lottery. So the problem with this kind of measurements, uh, where we have the subjective parts of this analytics, is that we cannot simply teach our device how to analyze um, biological data. We need to make the mean outcome from different, um, from different physicians, from different uh, people analytics, and then teach our device to act as a cohort of people, not one person. This is the, the biggest problem. So what is all about the neuron? What this device does? What can I, what this device can help me? So I have few questions um, in the next couple of slides and I would like to answer you a couple of uh, fundamental features of this device. So the first question is about sleeping. So is the neuron about sleeping two hours per day? No, it's not. So the second question is, is about not sleeping at all. Uh, if this device could like magically uh, help me not sleeping at all, um, just like working for the whole day. No, uh, it won't help me this way. If the neuron help everybody and every, and every time um, experience the lucid dreaming, no, no, it won't help you experience lucid dreaming every time and every person. So is it about the accurate sleep tracking? Uh, yes, this is about the accurate sleep tracking. Is it about automatic sleep tracking? Yes, this is the right answer. Is it about the beating jet lag if I'm traveling overseas? Yes, this is about the jet lag. And is it about helping me sleep better? in some ways, of course. Yes, it is. And is it about uh, increasing my efficiency in the morning? Yes, this is about the increasing efficiency in the morning. So the neuron is the device which helps you adjust your body clock to your needs. So this is not the mag magical device that helps you not sleeping at all, it just adjusts your possibilities, it helps you adjust your organism and how your organism function to your expectation throughout the day. So how the device works. So the neuron track your sleep, but as I mentioned before, it is really um, difficult to objectively track your sleep. So what the neuron does, you track your sleep by measuring your brain waves, eye movement and muscle tension. This is the, the golden standard of sleep measurement. And then automatically analyze this sleep. But, uh, but as I mentioned before, we are not comparing human analytics to the machine analytic. We are comparing machine analytic into the cohort of people. So we are taking mean outcome of, gr of the group of people who describe the sleep, and then we teach the computer to act as a group of people. And the result is um, precise sleep analytics. Of course, it's not as precise as polysomnography study. However, this is the mean of different person from the cohort uh, which describes the sleep. So, when we, have uh, when we have created the architecture of your sleep and when the device understands how your sleep looks like, it starts influencing on your sleep. So this is this component, uh, the most magical. This is how this device could change your sleep. So the device sending flashes of the light, pulses of the light, in order, in order to affect the melatonin level, which is the sleep hormone. Melatonin is produced inside our brains and is responsible for feeling sleepy. 
and being awake at the same time. So when the melatonin amount is high in our blood, we feel sleepy and we are going to sleep. When by the end of the night, the melatonin level dropping down, we are waking up. So what this device does, with pulses of the light and with so-called bright light therapy, we could affect the release of melatonin into our blood. So the light therapy is a medical um, therapy and it's widely used across the world uh, in different hospitals um, and also in the consumer devices. Uh, if you Google light, uh, light therapy, you could see many outcomes. Um, however, right now, this therapy is used for treating um, seasonal affective disorder, so-called winter depression, um, or trouble of falling asleep, uh, mostly. However, last year, by the end of the last year, there was a one significant um, invention at Stanford Medical School. Um, the researchers from Stanford Medical School proved that if you provide the pulses of the light during the human sleep, you could change uh, the release of melatonin. So you could significantly change how your hormones from the body uh, are released. So the neuron used this technology. Um, we are providing pulses of the light through the closed eyelids in order to affect the release of melatonin, which is a sleep hormone. So saying in a nutshell, through the closed eyelids, we communicate with, the, with our brain, with the place in our brain called suprachiasmatic nucleus. This is, the, this is the part of our brain responsible for understanding the world around us, um, responsible for understanding uh, our body clock. And through this suprachiasmatic nucleus communicates with the pineal gland. Pineal gland is a tiny little organ inside our brain where the melatonin is being produced. So this organ, um, call, called third eye in animals, for example, is responsible for stirring our sleep. So uh, from this point of our brain, the information about feeling sleepy and uh, uh, being awake uh, is sending. So we're acting just like, a, uh, just like a sun, like an artificial sun. So we are sending pulses of the light to change your behavior. So we could help you adjust to the new time zone. Um, we could help you fall asleep faster and we could help you uh, wake up much more easily. So um, with this device, we cooperate with the head of uh, National Sleep Foundation, with the, Dr. Christopher Drake, um, and together with his clinic uh, in Henry Ford Hospital in Detroit. Um, this week, we are starting clinical trials of this device. So as I mentioned, we are using technology being introduced uh, by Stanford Medical School um, but this week we are starting testing um, this technology using the neuron. And right now, a um, couple words about our delay. So the delay is uh, running, running longer and longer. It's more than a year right now. So I want to tell you a story about uh, the development of this device and um, what it took us so long to um, to show you the, the real thing. So the answer is uh, the design. So a lot of you think that, uh, and um, we had this problem uh, with the Kickstarter backers. Uh, we weren't communicating uh, this design the right thing. So a lot of, lot of people thought that this is because of uh, the wrong color of the mask. So these devices, we don't like these devices, so we are working harder and harder to, um, to design a uh, more pretty pattern in the front of the, uh, of the mask. However, the, the design is the whole, uh, the whole device. And one of the crucial things inside this device are electrodes. So inside the neuron, there are three electrodes, and, um, and it's crucial for these electrodes to constantly touch the human forehead. 
Without this contact, we cannot analyze your sleep and we cannot create architecture of your sleep. So if during the night, uh, electrodes lose contact uh, between your skin, with your skin, um, the data collected by this device is less accurate. So this is the first thing and the first device, uh, first design. The second de design is, um, is being caused by this device. So this device is uh, created for you to sleep with. So this is crucial for this mask to be wear every single night. So if this device is not comfort enough, you won't sleep with this device uh, for a long time. And um, there will be the same outcome uh, as a couple of slides ago, that a lot of you could buy this project and then put, this, put, it, uh, put it away because it won't be comfortable. So at some point, we had the final device um, almost ready to be shipped. But after a couple of trials, we got the feedback that it's, it's terribly uncomfortable. And, um, and people almost cannot sleep with this device. So um, we decided to redesign the whole thing. Uh, we decided to create much more cozy device. And um, finally, um, I have the, the latest prototype on my neck. And uh, uh, you could try it after my presentation. So you will see that uh, uh, it's much more cozy and probably you will be able to sleep with this prototype on your face. Um, so this is mostly about the design, but also about the uh, lead time, elements lead time. So hardware is a hard thing and uh, it's especially hard if you're doing the hardware for the first time. And the biggest problem with mass production is a uh, uh, lead time for all the elements. So you need to pay a lot of money up front, and then you need to wait, wait for a long time um, to get these elements. Uh, even if during, the, uh, during, this, during this time, the design of device uh, uh, changed, you cannot change anything in the final device. So um, another problem with our delay is a lead time, because uh, we had to wait uh, for a long time for the components of this device. Um, However, I could say that uh, we are almost at the final loop and um, we start delivery uh, of Neuron uh, September this year. Thank you. My microphone doesn't work. Oh, no, no, sorry for you guys, that was my phone. You are on the web, right? Yeah. Yeah, I remember that was like a 2013, correct? Yes, that's yes, correct. Yes, I saw you on stage there. <laughs> okay, I was like, I knew that. I would actually use that for my long flights. That would be really awesome. Although I don't really suffer from jet lag. So we have a few minutes. So I'm going to allow a few questions from uh, the crowd. You can stay on stage, actually. I mean, unless you want to go there. Uh, anybody has a question? You just raise your hands. I know you want to try this. I still need you awake for the rest of the afternoon, though. So if you could just not try all the all at the same time this device because I need a crowd in front of me. Uh, anyone wants to ask a question or not? Oh, come on, you're shy. Oh, God. Okay, well, no, yes, no. One, one of you guys want to ask a question to your own company? <laughs> oh, I didn't see you. I'm so sorry. Please. Go ahead. Hi, I learned about this innovation. I'm very proud that it's made in Poland. Thank you. But since the time we met first, um, I also met with your competition, funny enough, just a few weeks ago. And I must say, they're spreading bad words, so we discuss it later. But my question is, uh, is there someone else besides the people I met that claimed they designed similarish thing and better? Is there someone else um, out there trying to finish off as you are trying to finish off? your project, the mask, um, that you are aware of. So uh, you're asking if, if there is competitive product out there that you know of, and how will you be different from the so-called competition? Your approach to the sleep 
um, as you said, to, to beat the jet lag, how your approach differs from others that you might know of? Mm -hmm. Or even if there is no one, then how, why did you choose the way you're working? I forgot all the technical words you were explaining to me that you're using, so unfortunately I don't know what to call it. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there are a couple of um, solutions right now at the market using light therapy, as I mentioned before. Um, as far as I know, one is from Belgium, one from Australia, I guess. But what they're doing, they're providing constant light, um, and you need to be uh, awake uh, for this therapy. So, and what we're doing differently is we are providing the light therapy in the middle of the night when your organism is the most sensitive for the light. So with this technology, we could shift your body clock uh, the most, because if you provide the light therapy when you're awake, the constant light therapy, uh, you, 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 you cannot um, trigger the same effect. Any other question? Oh, you're all asleep. Haha, <laughs> a good one. Okay, thank you, Camille. Thank you very much. Please applaud him.